What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the RA Visuals channel. And if you are new here, welcome. Thank you for checking out my channel. Uh, so today we have a very cool video for all of you guys because we are not only reviewing one laptop, but we actually are going to be reviewing two new laptops that Gateway and Walmart sent over to the channel. Uh, we already unboxed these in a previous video. And if you guys are one of those people that just loves uh, seeing somebody else you know, cut open a box and pull things out of it. You can click up here and you can watch that video. But really quickly, we're just going to get into these laptops and I'm gonna show you guys what each of them feature and the strong points and weak points of each laptop. So let's go ahead and roll our intro and get right into it. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna start our cool little laptop review here with the 14.1 inch Ultra Slim Series laptop. Now, quick disclaimer before I get into the review of this one, I'm not really gonna go super in depth with this one, like too many tests or anything like that, because this is more, I'm gonna say it right off the bat, it's more of just like a school, work, you know, uh, everyday type of laptop. It's got a lot of cool features and we'll go through it, but I'm not gonna extensively test it like I'm going to do with the other laptop. But um, let's go ahead and get into some specs real quick and I'm gonna list them off very fast because there's a lot of them. So hopefully you guys can uh, digest this pretty easily. Starting with the processor or the brain of the computer, we have a 10th gen Intel Core i5 1035G1 processor that is only clocked at 1.0 gigahertz apparently, but it turbos up to 3.6 gigahertz with six megabytes of cache. Now with this cool little laptop, you get yourself a 14.1 inch LCD IPS display that has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. And the copy that we have here in the office is this really cool like blue teal color with a uh, pretty much metal body other than the very bottom, but it's all painted the same color and it looks really nice. Now this laptop features the Tune by THX audio, which a lot of these gateway laptops apparently are gonna have. And uh, a lot of that stuff comes with that spatial sound type stuff that you could get when you actually use headphones, but uh, here's a little quick sample of what it sounds like through the onboard speakers on the laptop. What's up, Visuals fam, and welcome back to the channel for another video. So as you saw by the title, probably today we are going to be taking a look at another keyboard, mechanical keyboard that is, from Walmier or Gamma K, I don't know, they must have changed their name, something like that. But most of you guys probably know it as the Womier K87. Now this is like the, basically the bigger brother of the K66 we already reviewed on the channel. Now this laptop also features a 256 gigabyte solid state drive that is very fast and very snappy I've noticed. And it already has 16 gigs of onboard RAM. Very cool to see in a laptop at this price point. And if you guys are wondering about more storage, it is expandable and there is a cool little spot for it right on the bottom of the laptop. Let me see if you guys can see that. Let's get that right there. All you gotta do is remove these two screws right here, pull this little door off, and there is a nice little slot right there for you guys to install another M.2 drive. So very cool, very convenient, and you won't void the warranty by doing that. Something that when I move to the other laptop, you'll see eh, a little bit different. This laptop also features a built-in fingerprint scanner with Windows Hello, and this is one of the things that my girlfriend enjoys the most because it's just like her iPhone and stuff like that. She's not a huge like computer, like power user person like I am, so these little things like this actually make the laptop for her. Now the slimline laptop here features a one megapixel front facing camera. And as usual, you know, it's not really anything to write home about. The quality is eh, it's okay. Uh, it's something you could use in a pinch, but you know, as I always say with these kind of reviews, I'd suggest just using a different kind of camera anytime you want to do that. So one of the coolest features of this laptop that I myself am very impressed with is that it's supposed to get up to 10 hours of battery life. And now uh, using this and letting my girlfriend use this, She's had it around the house, you know, for like a couple weeks and she like basically never plugs it in. So this is partly true. I know that to get that full 10 hours, you do have to put it on a certain battery life setting and tweak those settings to save the battery as much as you can, of course. Uh, but for regular use, you're probably gonna see around six to eight hours of use if you're just doing light tasks like stuff that my girlfriend's doing. Now let's go ahead and go through some IO on this laptop real quick. So on the right side, you have yourself a Kensington lock, the power port, a USB 3.0, a full-size HDMI port, and a USB Type-C. Now, moving over to the left side, we have a micro SD card port, your headphone and audio jack, and then another USB 3.0. 
This laptop has Bluetooth 5.1 on board already and it has a built-in microphone in case you ever need it. And then if you're wondering about the full dimensions, it is 13.1 inches by 8.9 inches by 0.8 inches and it only weighs 3.5 pounds. Okay, so to be totally honest with you guys, that's really all I wanted to say about this little guy right here. This thing is coming in at 479 on the store right now at Walmart. So if you guys wanna pick up a laptop that is pretty freaking good just for all around type stuff and work in school, then this might be right up your alley. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get onto the laptop that probably most of you guys that come to my channel are very interested in seeing, and that is the 15.6 inch creator series laptop that we got right here. Now, these laptops come in two different variants. They come in an AMD option that features an AMD Ryzen 5 4600H and a GTX 1650. Now that configuration will go for 799. And they also have an Intel option, which is uh, the one we were sent right here. And now this features an i5 10300H and an RTX 2060. Now this variant that we're gonna show you goes for 999 right now. So let's go ahead and talk about this laptop. All right, so right off the bat, let's talk about some things that I like about it. I do like that it comes with a 10th gen Intel Core i5. Now, I do wish that you were able to upgrade that to an i7, that would have been awesome, but that option is not there. And this does come with a full-size RTX 2060 six gigabyte version, so that's really awesome. And for creation, that's gonna be great for GPU acceleration when rendering. Now, right when I started looking at this laptop, I knew there was gonna be something that I needed to change about it right away. So here are two things that you need to upgrade on this laptop, like immediately, if you want it to really be a creator laptop. So what I did was add eight more gigs of Crucial DDR4 at 3200 megahertz, and uh, it comes with eight gigabytes already, but honestly, to be an actual content creator laptop, 16 gigs of RAM should honestly be a minimum for running applications like Premiere, Photoshop, Lightroom, and doing more intensive tasks like that. Now the Creator Series here also comes with a Fizon 256 gigabyte PCIe Gen 3 NVMe SSD. Uh, this drive is actually very snappy and it is an excellent boot drive, pretty fast. But if you're planning on actually saving any like video content you're gonna work on or installing any games, Call of Duty, uh, you're gonna need to install a larger drive to handle that task. Uh, as this SSD, it couldn't even install Call of Duty Modern Warfare without anything else installed on the machine. Just right away, you, you th there's not enough room for it. Uh, so of course, this isn't Gateway's fault. Uh, that game is just gigantic and it's just ridiculous, but I still felt like another storage drive is a must for any serious gamer or creator that wants to save files. And we will get to what upgrades I personally made and how I did it later in the video. So let's go ahead and check out the IO that you get on this laptop. So starting with the right side of the laptop, you get a Kensington lock, a full size ethernet port, a USB 2, a microphone port, and a headphone port. Now, if you flip it around to the back of the laptop, we have two mini display ports and a full size HDMI. And then it also has a USB type C and the charging port. Then if we flip it over to the left side, we get an SD card port, which is awesome for creators because you constantly are gonna be using SD cards and two USB 3.0 ports. And some other quick features, if you wanna get rid of wires completely, it also has Bluetooth 5.1 on board so you can use wireless or Bluetooth peripherals if you'd like to. Now, as far as the size, dimension, or weight of this laptop, it measures 14.2 inch by 9.7 inch by 0.8 inch and it weighs four pounds. So it's not exactly like the lightest laptop out there, but uh, I didn't really expect that in a gaming or creator laptop anyway. So speaking of that, looking at the like construction, feel, and materials it's made out of, the uh, top of the screen and the keyboard are metal, but the bottom is actually like ABS plastic. This is kind of standard to see in laptops like this. Um, and it actually feels very solid all around the laptop. And the hinge between the panel and the keyboard is actually pretty good as well. So moving on to the sound and the onboard speakers, uh, they advertise the THX spatial sound again, which basically, again, you're gonna have to use if you wear headphones, but if you uh, do not have headphones and you wanna use the uncluded speakers right here, how do those sound? Let's go ahead and take a listen. stress the word current because uh, my setup is always evolving but I think I have it to a point where I'm happy with it enough 
to show it off to you guys, explain the gear choices that I made, and how I get it all to work with each other to bring you the streams you see every week. Now let's check out the screen. So included with this laptop is a 120 hertz LCD IPS display, which is really awesome given that it is a gaming and creation geared machine. So this should yield you better colors and deeper blacks, and you'll definitely want to run your games at those higher frame rates and utilize that RTX 2060. And it's gonna be awesome to see that reflected on your screen. Um, now, I would have loved to see a 144 hertz display here, but of course, that would have probably added more to the cost of the laptop, so I understand why they didn't do it, but you know, a lot of new laptops today have it, so it would have been cool to see. So of course, included below the screen this time is the webcam. Just big oof here. Uh, it's definitely not one of the features I'm impressed with on this laptop at all. Uh, it's basically just a 720p 30fps camera and they place it at the bottom of the screen So you're basically gonna be shooting video up your nose the entire time uh, In my opinion again, just get another webcam and be done with it now moving on down to the keyboard Let's talk about that really quick uh, now, I believe this keyboard is something like a mem mechanical keyboard. Maybe uh, it feels like it has some sort of clickiness in the key presses take a listen but it also doesn't feel like an actual mechanical keyboard uh, because of course it's on a laptop. Now, I told you in the last video, I thought this was only a monochrome keyboard, but it actually can be changed to whatever color you'd like. So the trackpad is pretty nice and uh, the presses feel pretty solid. So here's what that sounds like. Honestly, if you're a gamer or a creator, you're probably gonna end up being using a mouse a lot of times, but if you end up being in a pinch and you need to use the trackpad, it's pretty dang good. Now let's talk about battery life with this laptop. Now you have to remember, pretty much every laptop with a discrete GPU will usually not include a very long battery time. You should be able to enjoy up to five hours of battery life off the charger uh, if you're doing everyday related tasks like watching videos or just doing like an Excel spreadsheet or something like that. All right, so now on to probably one of the most important things you can do with this laptop right away and to make it just that much better. I'm talking about upgrading the Creator Series laptop memory to 16 gigs and installing a larger SSD for your media and game storage. So let's go ahead and get started with that. First, all I did was take out the 10 screws on the bottom of the machine. Now you'll notice that there's one screw hole covered up by the warranty sticker. Um, so if you want to open up your case and be able to upgrade the system yourself, you're gonna have to break this seal. So if you're not comfortable with it, uh, I, I don't know what to really tell you, but in order to take the cover off the bottom, you have to do this. Other than that warranty sticker though, there's no other obstacles in your way and you just have to pull the bottom tray off really nice and carefully and basically that's it. Super simple. As far as upgrades go, there's already an extra M.2 drive slot and they're open for you. So it's almost like they knew you were gonna do this. And there's also another spot for another stick of DDR4 memory open. So again, it's like they knew. Uh, yeah, I feel like this was a missed opportunity by Gateway to just offer this right from the factory as someone could easily want a larger drive to store games and files on, as well as have that additional eight gigs of RAM for more intensive editing and gaming tasks and you know not clogging up your computer. Uh, of course, this would obviously break that 999 price point they were going after, but uh, I feel like for almost any serious creator or gamer, they're, they're gonna end up doing these upgrades anyway, so that's why I included this, this in this video, and I didn't even wanna start testing it without doing these upgrades. So yeah, to do this, you simply insert the new RAM and SSD in their respective slots and screw or clamp it down, and that's it you're done. Okay, so now for what you guys have probably all been waiting for now that the specs and in my opinion, the most important upgrades this machine are out of the way, uh, I think we can start benchmarking it now. Now, as usual, let's go ahead and start with some gaming benchmarks and we're gonna get started off with 3D Mark as we normally do. So we're going to run the Skydiver benchmark and this is because it is best suited, as it says, for gaming laptops. And in this benchmark, we received a score of 26 568, which is honestly the highest I've gotten with this benchmark so far, so we're off to a good start. Next, we ran Fire Strike and received a score of 13098. And now just remember that this is a more GPU dependent benchmark right now. And just for something to uh, you know think about real quick, 
our Optiplex build that we did on the channel with an i7-4770, yes, that old of a chip, and a GTX 1070, it actually beat this score by a few points. But uh, really, it's, it's almost exactly the same score with a little bit of, you know, negligibility. So just think about that. An Optiplex build versus a $1,000 new laptop. I don't know. Lastly, for 3D Mark, we ran Time Spy and received a score of 5515, which this time actually beat that Optiplex build that we previously just mentioned. Uh, so that's some better news for this laptop. Next, we ran CSGO at high settings and we were easily able to achieve over 200 FPS plus and had an ultra smooth gaming experience. Now, this game usually plays very well with Intel processors because of their you know, usual great single core performance. And this example right here is no exception. Now, if you guys have been around the channel for a little bit, you gotta know that we always have to do Doom Eternal and we ran this at our optimized settings. And as usual, Doom Eternal performed just extremely well. And we were able to have a buttery smooth gaming experience with our FPS pretty much never dropping below 120 with maybe one or two exceptions uh, and even getting a high at like 180 plus FPS. So I'd say that's a clear win for this laptop, you guys. Now, Shadow of the Tomb Raider at high settings and no anti-aliasing, we squeezed out a score of 79 average FPS. And considering that this game is usually the big test for a system CPU performance, I'd say that our i5 we have here did an awesome job of handling this with the 2060 and it makes for an awesome gameplay experience in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We then ran Borderlands 3 at our optimized settings and we achieved a score of 91.42 average FPS with minimal stutters and the game looked absolutely amazing at 1080p on this IPS screen we have here. Now onto a game that I've been playing a little bit more lately, and that is the Rogue Company Beta. So with ultra settings, everything maxed out, we were able to see well above 110 FPS, and our frames actually stayed at that, you know, golden 120 frames number since our screen is 120 hertz, and it actually stayed above that for quite a bit, uh, just kind of dipping below to that 110 number when a lot was happening on the screen. So even though this game is still in beta, it actually plays extremely well, and it was very smooth on this laptop. Now, of course, we couldn't end our gaming benchmarks without Call of Duty Modern Warfare added in here. So since we added that one terabyte hard drive, we could actually install it since it takes up about 225 gigabytes of space. Uh, yeah, but anyway, dropping into the war zone as we always do, we are able to see some very solid FPS numbers at 1080p, optimized settings as I always run. Uh, and we were seeing easily over 100 FPS with our frames usually starting around the like 110, 115 range, which is great to see on this hardware. And it provides a great experience uh, to play with a 120 Hertz panel that we got on board. All right, so this laptop isn't just meant for gaming. It is meant for content creation as well. So let's run a couple benchmarks that are geared towards that. So first for content creation, I ran the Cinebench R20 benchmark to get an idea of like what a render might be like with just our i5-10300H on board. So it took the system like just under three minutes to finish that whole render, and it was just barely able to edge out an i7-6700HQ with a score of 1648. Now, this is where being able to have the option of an i7 in the system will be great as we were just barely edging out a five-year-old laptop CPU. Yikes, Intel, uh, figure that out. But benchmarks like this don't tell the whole tale. So starting off with Lightroom, I just went ahead and imported a folder of images just to mess around with, you know, put a few develop options on it, mess around with the sliders a little bit. And uh, from my experience, everything was nice and snappy. I didn't experience any lag or stuttering or anything like that, which is awesome and uh, great experience overall. Now switching over to Photoshop, I imported like an older photo that I took a little while ago um, and something that I already adjusted in Lightroom just to kind of mess around with it. And I mess around with a few things like adding layers, adding some text over top of it, which usually slows PCs down actually. For some reason, the adding text layers always does that. So now I did notice the usual stutter when like clicking the text button. Uh, yeah, it, it happens every time, I swear. Even my PC back here does that. But anyway, that was like the only real hiccup I noticed this entire experience and everything else was very, very smooth as I was working. Now onto the most important part for me personally, maybe you guys as well, that is video editing in Premiere Pro. So now, like I mentioned before, this laptop has an RTX 2060, so GPU accelerated rendering using its CUDA cores, uh, that'll be utilized for sure. So I hopped into Premiere, 
added some 4K drone clips that I had laying around, just haven't been able to edit them yet. Uh, they're from my DJI Mavic Air 2, and I applied a couple adjustment layers with some color and added a little graphic just for fun. And then I took the 40 second clip that we had there and used the general YouTube 4K render settings and clicked export. So this laptop was able to render the short clip in 27 seconds. This means it was not only able to render in real time, which is kind of what I was hoping for, uh, just basically 40 seconds takes 40 seconds, that's what I was hoping, but it actually rendered it faster than that. It basically rendered the clip in almost half the time of the actual clip length, so that's really cool. Pretty amazing what GPU acceleration can do for some video editing these days. So that's gonna be it, you guys. If you guys enjoyed this video and uh, you know you wanna show me that you guys enjoy this kind of content, make sure you go down there and give me a like and uh, leave me some comments down below. Let me know which uh, laptop you guys would rather prefer or if you guys maybe would choose something else. I'd love to hear you guys uh, and what you guys have to say about it. And if you're not already part of the Visuals fam, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you will always know when I am posting new videos or going live with a new stream. That's gonna be it for today, you guys. Take care, I'll see you later. Bye.